Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 42 of Camerata Pacifica's Concerts at Home. My name is Adrian Spence. I'm the artistic director for Camerata Pacifica. And look at these wonderful people I've got with me this morning. Nicholas hey. Daniel, our oboe player, Kristen Lee, our violin player, and Jose Frank Ballester, who keeps showing up whether we want them to or not. Our <laughs> Spanish clarinet player. Hi, everybody. It's Hello. so good to see you all again. I know you haven't you seen each other in a while. So what's going on with everybody? Yeah. Kristen, Hello. where are you? I, um, I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've been here since January. I, I mean, I live here, so I've been here for very much of the pandemic, but um, I had the great fortune to travel to Asia in Taiwan for about two months in November and December. Um, and then I just got back in January last month and been just kind of hibernating and, you know, just, you know, the things that we do. <laughs> Wait a minute! You're, you're one of these. You're one of these musicians that played the full concert halls. Yeah, I got to perform at multiple concerts in in big halls with thousands in the audience. Um, they were all still wearing masks, but they weren't socially distanced. And oh man, like it was like almost a blessing and a curse because experiencing that was so just reminded me of how incredibly lucky we are with what we do and how important it is to be making music. But having to come from that back to this has been a little bit, it's, it's been a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, I was like sort of in this high and sort of coming back to nothing is a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit hard. But having said that, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that things are moving forward and hopefully that we can get back to normal semi semi normal soon <laughs> so but the question is what normal do we want because right. I, I i think that well looking at things over here in the uk where i am i think there's going to be um i think the result of what's been going on because it's been so economically uh, devastating mm. is going to be massive so what that means is an opportunity to look at what we do and why we do it and who we do it for and 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 maybe build back better um, and for me that has to mean um, education it has to mean doing something for the people where you live it has to mean music being relevant for everybody again and it has to be in some way environmentally sustainable and it has to be equal access for everybody so if you hold on to a few simple rules then in, in, in what you do then it's sort of possible isn't it to 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 kind of it, it and it has to start with us all individually we've got to somehow find a way to um to to do something different but you know that's what i spend quite a lot of my i haven't played for months i haven't played a concert for months um everything's uh, the the first lockdown though a lot of people were doing things this this time there's really comparatively little going on it's more in, in different mm -hmm. parts of the of europe and and brexit has has bit bitten very badly um, a lot of traveling artists who are now having great problems going to countries like Spain for instance and Italy Germany and France are being quite pleasant but it's uh, the realities of it I mean I, I am fortunate very very fortunate because I'm I am now dual a German and British citizen but um, so I can say Guten Morgen <laughs> British, um, and and so I, I am I'm very very lucky to have that anybody who has that opportunity has, has, has quickly grabbed it but um, yeah, so I've been doing the cat litter. I've been cooking. I went for a walk and got so okay, that makes, about makes half an hour ago. <laughs> don't get don't get the cat litter and the cooking mixed up. That's. <laughs> so you're doing a lot of cooking and a lot of hiking. In fact, it's what time? It's eight o'clock on Saturday morning when we're recording a specific time, and you're getting ready to go. You've been hiking. You've been exploring your. Yeah. The beauty of the Pacific Northwest, right? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of that. Yeah, because being at home all the time is kind of crazy, right? So I'm so I'm using uh, going out for hikes to see friends, to exercise, to see. I love photography to do, enjoy nature, and nature here is just beautiful. So yeah, it's being an outlet for me. Like as as. Uh, I, I, I envy Kristen by having play concerts, right? And 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 I've seen Nick on social media maybe like months ago doing concerts and I haven't played a concert with an audience in almost a year. 
in March will be a year. And uh, so in a, in a way, I, I, I felt like I'm, I'm, ext I'm extremely grateful uh, by teaching, right, at the, at the university, and that's been my outlet. I, I, I love working with my students, and, and, and I've been doing some online concerts as well, but, uh, but I truly miss, miss playing. But, uh, but this, is, this has been a time where, where I had this time for myself, because usually when we are on the go all the time, we we don't allow this time for ourselves that that time to to really ask yourself what really matters to you what 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 are what are the goals you want to accomplish on the on the on the future yeah uh, also let's think about it's really it. inwards isn't it you know in, in a yeah. way the whole whole period i was listening to joyce di donato being interviewed she lives in in spain actually um, mm -hmm. and she's having three singing lessons a week and she's She's demonstrating her warming up, and and uh, she's done she's done one concert, I think, or two concerts in a year, and and uh, it, it was really interesting to see how. But I think for all of us, it's the the. I mean, I've done, I've been traveling the world for forty years, and this is the first time I've ever just stayed in one place for a few months. I mean, it's just, it's mm -hmm. it's a huge privilege. But at the same time, it, I mean, actually, the funny thing is, I don't know if you found this, but actually, going on stage for the first time was unbelievably nerve-wracking <laughs> exciting <laughs> but with when i did um, in september i did a concert with bryn Turvel, and that the thing is that you walk on stage and there's an orchestra all all two meters apart huge distances apart mm -hmm. so a, an orchestra of 20 people filled the whole barbican stage which you could fit 100 people onto and that's with the stage extension as well but there's the smell of hand sanitizer as you walk on stage <laughs> and, and, and everybody walks on in their masks and then takes them off to play i mean it, it's there's so much going on in your head that you're just focusing on the music is but then when the music starts mm. it's okay <laughs> no well, for me let's, I, let's, I, hey yeah. krishna let's start the music and we'll come back to this in a okay. second <clears throat> so the first piece for the first piece we'll hear today is the piece you're playing with Jill. can you tell us a little bit about that take a take a couple of minutes and tell us about that Sure. Um, this is the um, Britain's, Benjamin Britten's Suite for Violin and Piano. And uh, this is a piece that actually, I'm trying to recall how I discovered it. I think I heard like a snippet of it on YouTube or something like that um, just a few years back um, of the last movement, which is like a waltz movement. And when I heard this, I thought, okay, how come I've never heard this piece? How come no one plays this? this is great. So I decided to check out the whole thing. And I was blown away. And I made it a point to Adrian being like, Adrian, I really want to play this piece. Can you please program it? I really want to learn it. And um, I was so fortunate to have this opportunity to perform it multiple times and also have this wonderful video as well. I feel like Britain's um, Nick, I would love for you to chime in if you, you feel similarly, but I feel like he's kind of underrated in so many ways, because I think he's one of the most genius, brilliant, and sophisticated intellectual composers out there that people aren't just, I mean, mo people who know, know, but I don't think they know as well as like, you know, a name like Mozart, you know, the household names like Beethoven. And, and Britain definitely is someone who was a visionary. He was always pushing the boundaries and very aware of a lot of the social issues and that, you know, and expressing that through his art. And I feel like his name is uh, definitely someone that we could promote <laughs> a lot more. And this piece, as you'll hear, is um, very, very special. Um, not, not only is it just special, but it's uh, very uh, conversational with the audience. It's uh, something that people can engage into and really understand very easily as well. So, um, uh, and it's not very, it's not played very much. Um, so I, I am very, very thrilled that we can share this piece. So let's, let's promote some Benjamin Britten. I think that's a good idea for today. So this is from January 16th, 2017, with Kristen and Gio Ponsaddle and Britain's Opus 6 Suites.
That was Britain's Opus 6 Suite, and let's bring us back to everybody. Boom. Wonderful piece. Wonderful. And wonderful performance. Um, I, I, I have a feeling I know the answer to this question. Um, when did I first get you three together? What was, was it the occasion I think I might... Steampunk, I think. We've, we've kind of realised it was for Steampunk. I think these, these, these two might have known each other before, but it was, uh, yeah, that was... I met, I met Nick with lashes. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Was that rehearsal, was I? <laughs> no, no, not for rehearsal, but that was such a fun week. Oh, man. <laughs> you, you, you were wearing a Derek shirt. You were packing heat. Done, like, so actually done into my eyes so that they're there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was um, <clears throat> so memorable in many ways. I mean, obviously, having, you know, gotten to play with the one of the best, I mean, the best Nick Daniels and meeting him um, in this very wonderful piece. But also, Adrian, you know, you 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 got us in some costumes, <laughs> things that we would probably never ever do in our lifetime. <laughs> um, I remember you were not, you weren't so convinced, Kristen Lee. These two guys, they were, they just, they were gone, man. They got I was a newbie. I was like new to this, so I was like, I'll do whatever you want. But really, <laughs> is this <laughs> what camera on us about? Hip. That Beretta was the thing that I think convinced you about it. She was packing. <laughs> and you remember, it was like the last day. So in the rehearsal, in the rehearsals, uh, or in, in when we're the dress, literally the dress rehearsals, it was the last moment Jose got this little mustache. 
and this little hair like and he turned into charlie chapman remember yeah. he sort of <laughs> oh it was so memorable amazing. yeah <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful and the thing is the music is so good actually it's mm. such a good piece he's a really wonderful composer i think in fact he's got um an oboe quartet uh in his calendar to write for me which is exciting well, uh, so so next week maybe we'll do steampunk again. But um, but what was it? I mean, what was the is it, Do you find it different? So we've got um, American, I guess, but Korean born. We've got English and we've got Spanish. Do you detect? It, does that make a difference? Jose, give us some information there. Yeah, it, it, it's really incredible because the group was such an international group, right? And that. And we're digging into steampunk culture as well. So this is like a multicultural, and you and you put all this, not only our culture but our own personalities. Mm -hmm. You look at that group, like everybody's personality is just like, it's like. But the thing is, it's actually. I mean, it's annoying to have to give you praise, Adrian. No, I'm gonna. I'm a recording. But I think you should take it because actually, the chemistry, it's not an accident. I don't think, I mean, you, you do your homework, you know exactly, you get to know the players really well before you meet them. But I mean, before you invite them, you actually meet meet and hear all of us play. And uh, and I don't think it's an accident that it works as well as it does. And, and, I, and there's never been a, there's never been a mistake. It's been amazing that, it, that. and I, I think I've said it before, but it's, um, I mean, it's just the biggest joy. And actually the thing is that working with people from different cultures, is is actually a huge privilege because everybody i mean it's like when when i brought uh, Kristen to leicester to my festival she was able to tell me that the kimchi in leicester at one particular place was actually <laughs> on point now i would never have taken kimchi there but now i know that there's a place in leicester where when it opens i can get kimchi but it's not just about the food it's, the, it's, the, whole ca it's, it's the characters of everything and and uh, it, it, it's a wonderful thing, actually. I must say, um, gosh, I, I really miss you all. I miss oh, the group. I miss yeah. miss um, SoCal as well. Mm -hmm. oh, I think it's also here, just the soak. Yeah, <laughs> I, I also want to add that just musically, I think the cultures do make a difference too. I mean, uh, I know that I'm a string player, and we have wind players here, but you know, there are very different types and schools of playing, but what makes Camerata, what is trusted at the Camerata Pacifica stage is that everybody is at their highest level of their artistry, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they, you know, their art, the, their pursuit or their uh, interpretation or the way they have been brought up or whatever it is, or their ideas are coming from very diverse places. And I think that's one of the most incredible things about chamber music, the fact that it's a platform for you to be able to have that communication. But when it's on top of that, it's Camerata Pacifica, an international group of artists who are at their highest level, then it's just basically fireworks, but also just like a week full of like such stimulating, like week of just ideas and learning and, you know, conversing and- I find that I have to come more. I mean, I'm I'm very thorough about preparation, but I have to come more prepared for camarata than almost anything else I ever do, because well, first of all, it's the honour you pay your colleagues coming prepared, but it's it's just because everybody's so so quickly into it, and you've got in order to be able to form an, uh, uh, an interpretation together, you've got to be completely on top of your own music. So I find it's it's you know I have to come hot. <laughs> well, you, what, what you're speaking to, I think Nick mentioned it specifically, but but you all refer to is is has been the my strategy from the the get go from 1990, which is not to present concerts per se, but to create a vital and vibrant community and allow that community within the community of musicians. And then you know that I encourage you to, to so we want that into the, the community that see audience and make a larger camarada community built around music. And that's what I think allows this greater creativity. Let's go to the next piece of music and we'll have, I know, I have an idea. We'll have a Spanish guy play a piece by an Irish guy who wanted to be English so bad as hair hurt. Jose, tell us about the piece you're going to play. 
Well, you just told the audience half of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it's, you know, I didn't know this piece. And it was, it was you, Adrian, that, that suggested me to play this piece. And uh, it's called Three Intermetti by, by Charles Stanford. He was an Irish uh, composer. And these three intermezzi are three beautiful uh, pieces for, for clarinet and piano. And they are like very Brahmsian, very, uh, they're beautiful. It's beautiful music. Great. Well, from November 7th, 2018, this is Jose and the wonderful Molly Markowski and Stanford's three intermezzi.
I'm so oh. sleepy. I'm still sleepy. Like those really, are- I'm just like I'm like getting nostalgic. I I miss you guys so much. Like having these. <laughs> oh, it hurts. So so that that's that's fabulous. So Kristen's getting nostalgic and Jose's getting sleepy. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm keep, dude, I'm keep, I'm keeping that in, buddy. That's, that's being broadcast tomorrow. Morning. That's Stan. Thanks, Jose. Jose. We're, we're, we're looking at Jose and look. Oh, look at he's all dewy eyed and he misses people. He's like, no, I'm just sleeping. Uh, <laughs> not enough coffee. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, yeah, that that I take Stan in. Jose, that was a fabulous performance. Clearly, you weren't sleeping. <laughs> Uh, it's it's gonna be, can you imagine what it's going to be like when we get back? Can you imagine what it's going to be like when we get back together? It's going to be huge. It's going to be mega. <laughs> can I just say something about Stanford? Because there's a one really wonderful thing about him. Um, I played recently the Coleridge Taylor, Samuel Coleridge Taylor nonet. Um, he was a British composer, a um, black composer, and he studied. He was a virtuoso violinist. Studied at the Royal College, and when he was at the Royal College under Stanford. Uh, who was the principal, uh, Stanford brought in a rule that all musicians should have, all performers should have composition lessons. And one of the first pieces that, that uh, Coleridge Taylor wrote was this nonet, which is for, um, it's for strings, wind and piano. And I think it's an absolute humdinging masterpiece. It's, wow. even, even if it wasn't by a person of colour, um, it would still be really one of the best, most lovely, fun pieces to play. But I love the fact that that that, that Stanford is basically responsible for Coleridge Taylor not just being a great violinist. He is basically brought the composition to, and it's actually it's not the case in music colleges and conservatoires now that everybody does composition. Um, so, and maybe it should be because maybe we'd have you know more composers, great composers, but. Uh, yeah, so I, I love that idea. We should really play that piece, Adrian. I would love to. I, I've just written it down because I'm I'm actually reworking what my concept for next season is going to be, and and I'm having the idea just when I've been talking with with my musical friends here, I'm thinking we need to get some large ensemble things together because this, you know, when when we come back together with the audience. It's not just that we're coming, but it has to be a celebration. My goodness, at the end of this, it needs to be, every concert needs to be one big blinking party from start, from the first note to the last. And that's what I'm going to be looking at. So you, you'd you mentioned that to me before, and the reminder, oh, right. writing it down, good. <laughs> it's got a gorgeous stuff for the violin, gorgeous stuff for clarinet, oboe, bassoon. It's, it's really... Really so Stanford, there's also a, 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 a nonet by Stanford. That's You're, true. The, the music of that I'm period was, um, yeah, the, especially out of out of England. I'm loath to admit, I'd love to say the British Isles, but out of England. Um, so, so many of those turn of the century composers were just c- eclipsed by what was coming out of Europe at the time. To to our to to our, our loss. It, it's it, maybe not every work's a masterwork, but such well crafted music. It's such very true. Beautifully it's, well. I've just I've just done a, a well in in last year I did a recording uh, for oboe and string quartet um, with a Doric quartet, and it was the Bliss Quintet, the Bax Quintet, the Finzi Interlude, the Vaughan Williams Cor Anglais and String Quartet pieces, which are really beautiful. And, and a piece of Delius, which was arranged by Eric Fenby for Oboe and String Quartet. And actually, we ended up that week thinking that we'd just been playing truly great music. I mean, you, we've done the backs there, which is which is actually the lightest of all those pieces. The Finzi is an absolutely mm-hmm. knockout piece, great composer, but the Bliss Quintet mm-hmm. has a serious piece of music. It's it, it's kind of exotic as well. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, um, there was the movement towards, ori- there's this Orientalist movement uh, that's how it was described at the time. It's not correct to say that in that way now, but it was an Orientalist movement in the twenties in 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 London, and it was and it's got a lot of that sort of uh, very very heavily perfumed sort of jasmine uh, sense to it. It's 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 a most wonderful piece. But the Finzi piece, I mean, we were all you know really moved by by the piece in the end, and it was wonderful to see young 
great young string quartet take on those pieces. So I'm looking forward to, to when that comes out. Well, um, so oh, Jose, do you remember the Rheinberger? We're, I don't think anybody. Were you? Did you play in the Rheinberger with us? I don't. Th I don't think anybody else I, was. Here. I I played the piece, but not at Camerata. But yeah, there, great, there was uh, there was a Camerata incident <laughs> with the Rheinberger. Remember Jose? John Steinmetz, the bassoon player, the uh, an, an incredible wit, yeah. just roasted me um, in an introduction about fifteen or twenty minutes, and I need to find that recording. <laughs> no, nobody could play. The performance afterwards was really fun, but not not broadcastable. We were so <laughs> we were still laughing so hard. <laughs> oh, That's it? what we need to come back to. Anyway, um, apropos to what Kristen was saying, I, I, I completely agree. I think um, Benjamin Britten is, is an, is, needs to be much more well known. And I think I'm happy, I, I think I'm noticing that, that he is becoming more well known. And we're gonna do our bit times two today um, because you just did the, the, the over six feet and Nick, um, with Kristen and Richard and, and Annie, uh, we're about to reveal a, a recording of, well, share. Well, the, the Opus 2 Britain Fantasy Quartet is what we're playing, um, which was written for Leon Goosens in 1932. Um, actually, Opus 1 is called <coughs> Sinfonietta, and that's for one of each, with one each of each woodwind and string. That's a piece we could definitely play in Camerata too. It's an incredible piece. I mean, in a way, it's sort of like con it condenses everything of Britain. It, it, it's so bizarre for me to hear you say that Britain should be well known because in, in my, I mean, we have him on the banknotes here and we had him on a coin and and uh, he's, I mean, there are other composers. There's a composer called Michael Tippett who is far more overlooked and was also a great composer, was thought it, by many people to be greater than Britain during their doing their um, comparative lifetimes but um but britain is i mean as, as an opera composer he's a complete master i mean something like turn of the screw or midsummer night's dream which i happened to see a couple of years ago again just incredible sense of theater but um so the the fantasy quartet was written uh, for leon goosens and just here i have the oboe that did the world premiere of britain's fantasy quartet now i hold it close to the uh, camera if you compare it to if you remember what a normal oboe looks like with much more metal on it um, this one's very simple this is from 1911 and it was his first and last instrument I actually played this oboe to Goosens once when he was um, nearly 90 and it's um it's it's extraordinary because it's if you can see the back it's got a like um like that light there's that, just that place there is where his thumb would go and he's worn a, a sort of dent in the instrument from his thumb mm -hmm. for playing it for 80 years or something. I, I've actually, I recorded the devious I just mentioned, I recorded it on this instrument. And the really strange thing about it is I had to really, really work to make it sound like me and not Goosen's because it still has the memory of his sound in it and the, and the f his way of being rubato. It's almost as if he's, it's not like a haunting, but it's like a kind of, W muscle memory for the wood but this is a very special instrument and it's been loaned to me by by his his daughter jenny who's great so it's pretty concept. unusual it's pretty unusual to find such an old wooden instrument that hasn't cracked i guess well do you know what those and clarinets are hard to find i think right comparatively yeah there's there's more around than you think because people don't realize that they're that they're playable and sometimes the, the mechanism isn't isn't needs you know zhuzhing up a bit um, but actually, there's a there's a quite a big movement, particularly in this country, towards performing early 20th century music on early 20th century instruments. So there's a conductor called Paul McCreesh, who's who's a friend of mine and a friend of Jose's as well, um, who is is I'm I'm going to be playing the El Girl's Dream of Gerontius on this instrument. It's been cancelled and, and put put back about three times now. But um, um, uh, this this instrument played in all but one of the British coronations of their monarchs in the 20th century. 
Um, and I know that because we did a recording called An English Coronation which with Paul McCreesh, which is, I do urge you to go and listen to that, that recording. It is the most devastating. I mean, apart from anything else, it's a choir of five, 500 um, state school kids uh, singing things like Parry, I Was Glad, um, Say Dr. <laughs> Priest, I mean, all the music, the best music that would have been written or used during the coronation. It's an unbelievable disc. It's won, won prizes and things. It's great. Well, tell, tell us about the, let, introduce the Upo Quartet and let's listen to it. The Upo Quartet is, is in, a, in a cyclic form. In other words, it's one long piece with different pieces, with different sort of sections that go through it. And the, the beginning and the end are both in a march sort of feeling, which starts almost inaudibly in the cello and finishes almost inaudibly in the cello. Um, Britain uh, w was premiered in Venice, actually, funnily enough, by Goosens. And um, Goosens always used to ask his composers to leave um, a, a good old chunk for him to rest his chops, old boy, he used to say, because he didn't want to get too puffed out. Um, and uh, so what Britain did was in the middle of this piece, because it, it starts in this, in this march temper, and then it goes quite crazy, actually, using a lot of modal sounds and then it sort of explodes and then there's like a five minute string trio which is just exquisitely beautiful it's like it's it's uh, it's it's arcadian in a way it, it's like a a glimpse of a, of a of a life that's gone um and then that again gets very hot and 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 almost too hot to handle and then after that five minutes of string trio, he brings the oboe in back on this incredible high note, incredibly quiet, uh, as if to say, OK, you've had your rest. Now do your work. <laughs> and then well, and that again, that does it has these these build three huge build ups in it. Um, it's a bit like a, a triple wave form, almost like um, like the frontispiece that of Debussy's La Mer, those 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 Japanese lithographs. Um, and and then it just kind of disappears off where it came from and you go oh what just happened and i'm often left in the audience going what was that all about that was amazing but what happened why did that happen? <laughs> I don't get it. well let's let's uh let's hear nick doing his work um from october 19th 2018 it's nick and kristen and richard o'neill and annie asnagurian and britain's uh fantasy quartet opus two um, thank you all for being here. It was so much fun to get you all together. Um, enjoy your hike, Jose, and see you all. See you all later. Stay well. Stay well. Okay. Stay awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.
Thank you. 